Walter Brainiacs, welcome to the Joss and Kendro video hour. But it's not an hour. All right, today we're going to talk about properties of real numbers. So we have this handy dandy little visual tool for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And basically, think about pouring numbers into, each, into that top funnel and just see where they go. So I see that the top funnel is smaller and it fits inside the others. Right, that means it's a smaller group of numbers and every time it, the funnel gets bigger there are more numbers involved. So, natural numbers. Think of naturally counting. When you're a little kid, when they ask you, can you count? What number do you start with? One! Right, so the one, two, three, etc. are the natural numbers. Whole numbers. Now. The word whole numbers makes me think of a hole in the wall which looks like a zero. So the only thing different is it has a zero in it. Wait, so you mean that these natural numbers are also whole numbers? Yes, that's okay. why they can fit into the funnel. The only difference is whole numbers as a zero. Okay, integers. Integers are just the numbers on the number line, which now includes Negative. Negative numbers. So all whole numbers and natural numbers are also integers, but we added more to it, the negatives. All right, the next one is rational numbers. This one, think of ratio. Ratio is a number over another number. So you should be able to write all rational numbers as a fraction. Okay. Does that mean that they are fractions? Not necessarily, because if I write the number 3 over 1... It can be a fractions. Singular or singularity. No, the number like 3 over 1, we just write as a 3, but it can be written as a fraction. Okay, what about um, like 1 fourth? 1 fourth is definitely a fraction. What about like 0. 0.7? 0. 0.7 can be written as a fraction. Yeah, that's 7 tenths. 7 over All right, 10. Alright, I got another question. Point three repeating. What do we know that as? That's one third. One third, yeah. Okay, so I like to remember rational numbers. They can be written as fraction. Uh, they are whole numbers and natural numbers and integers and all of those things. But then when it comes to decimals, they either need to terminate. Uh huh. Like point seven. Or meaning end. Or have a pattern. Like, like point three 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 three, 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 three forever. Or point one six seven one six seven one six seven one six seven one six seven. Over and over. All right. That all goes into real numbers. And everything I th think Algebra 2 kids have learned so far have been real numbers. Right. This year we're going to learn about some non-real numbers. Yeah. What about these guys? They're irrational. like on their own. Irrational numbers don't have a pattern and don't repeat and don't terminate. So we have some special numbers that show up a lot like the square root of 3 or pi, oh, yeah. things like that, that don't ever quit with the decimal and don't have a pattern. Okay. I think that's cool. Yeah. Okay, here's another picture. This is just a Venn diagram, um, and it just shows the numbers kind of nested together there. Their whole package is real numbers, but we have individual smaller packages in the real numbers. Shows the same thing as the funnels, but maybe just a different way to visualize. Yep. All right. Oops. So now we're going to use your new vocabulary. This one, let's circle the real numbers. All right. So real numbers is the big bubble. Right. So everything we talked about, all the natural whole numbers, integers, everything. So negative 3 is an integer, so it is definitely a real number. Square root of 5, that doesn't have a pattern. Wait, if I didn't know that, how would I figure that out? You can use your calculator. Okay. But basically, any square root that doesn't have a an answer, like square root of 4 has an answer of 2. It's a perfect square. Yeah. Okay. So every real or a square root number that doesn't simplify is irrational. Okay, so, so this is irrational, but is it it's still real? real? Oh, yeah, because yeah, irrational is in the... All in that pile. Now, square root of negative 1. Can we take a square root of a negative? I think the calculator says error. Error. So that is not a real number. That's not in our repertoire of real numbers. Eventually, we'll learn about that. Yep. Zero is definitely, it's a whole number, and a bunch of others. Seven-eighths is a rational number, so that's not so hard. 
Okay, so this one now it's a little more specific. It says that are integers. So that means it has to be on the number line. Negative 3, definitely. Square root of 5, I don't know where to put that because it never ends. That's not even a real number. 0, I definitely know where to put that. That is not a whole number or a, a number on the number line. I think the problems in the, that the kids are going to see in the textbook, they give them a number and they say describe it. So you would have to take each of these and say. So this, and you want to use all of the names that apply. Okay, so that one would be? An integer. Integer. Whole number. No, no, not whole number. Not natural. We don't naturally count with a negative 3. Rational. Can we write it as a fraction? Yes. Yes. I like to think of the funnels. So if you, we look back to our funnels, negative 3 fit into integers. So then anything below, anything it, below it, it's also going to be a part of as well. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's, That's so why, small. That's why I liked those funnels to begin with. They're fun funnels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. All right, classifying a variable. Your school is sponsoring a charity race. If each participant made a donation of D, D of 1550 to a local charity, which subset of real numbers best describes the amount of money raised? So this isn't asking how much money. No, it just says what kind of numbers. number is So we're using those words again. Yeah. Okay, so $15.50. And that has a decimal. Right. So that rules out counting. Rules out whole number. Right. Rules out natural number. We don't naturally count with decimals. So what about, what's the next one under that? Uh, integers. Not an integer. Not a whole number. And then underneath that is rational. Yes. Can I write this as a ratio, as a fraction? Yes. 15.5 is 15 half. and 5 tenths or 15 and a half. Okay, so, then, so we're taking 1550 and we're multiplying it by the number of donations. So that's this we're having to multiply by something that is a rational number. So it's going to be rational. Right. Rational ratio. And it would also be real. Yeah, so we're, we're doing it by process of elimination as well as just looking at the number. All right, well, how about number of participants in the race? Well, can we have a half of a participant? No. Can we have a negative participant? Only in their attitude, maybe, <laughs> because they don't want to run. Not a negative number of right. participants. So what kind of numbers can be participants? Well, I think the number zero we need to think about. Can there be zero people in the race? I guess, I mean, probably not going to happen, but is it possible? Yes. Yeah. So I think that's most specific, the so zero, one, two, three. Numbers. So those are whole numbers. Zero looks like a hole in the wall. All right. All right, got it. Let's see, what is the graph of the numbers, da 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 Now, we got some hints here for you. First of all, find the integers each number is between. So you can use your calculator. And you can think of it in fraction form before you put it on the number line. Square root of 3. What, what if you didn't have a calculator? How would you think about that? I would think, think of, things of you know. the other square roots I do know. Square root of? 1. Okay, and then the next one you know square is? Root of 4. And it's between those two things. What is the square root of 1? 1. The square root of 4 is? 2. So it's got to be somewhere in between those two things. And it's a little closer to square root of 4 because 3 is closer to 4 than 1. So okay. I would say it's one point. Seven-ish. I think that sounds good. And to be sure, you could just do it on the calculator. Right. When we label it, make sure you label the original thing. Don't put 1.7 to square root right, of 3. Right, that's not what they're asking. Right. All right, negative 1.4 repeating. Now, that's just really close to 1.4. So almost... So it goes there? No, you got to go past the negative Oh, because it's more negative. So negative 1... And I'm also thinking here would be halfway, so I'm going to put it not quite. That looks good. Okay, negative 1.4, repeating. And then one third we all know and love is 0.3 forever, which is about a third of the way. Yep. And they did one third. Very nice. Um, just a side note on the homework assignment, I think it's totally fine if they 
do one big number line and put it. Absolutely. On a tester quiz, we're going to give them a number line. Yeah, just label it like number was one, two, three, or A, B, C, or whatever. So it's easier to find when we're grading it. All right, so how do we... <laughs> Ooh, that looks scary. <laughs> All right, so you eat the bigger number. Oh, yeah. It opens up to eat the larger number. Now, square root of 26, that's pretty darn close to square root of 25. What's the square root of 25? Square root of 25 is 5. So we're just a little bit over 5 where the right side is over 6. So I'm Well, thinking, and I know the square root of 36 is 6. So that's bigger than the square root of 36. Right. So obviously we're going to be less than. Yes. Looks yeah. like the number or the letter L for less than. Where the alligator eats a bigger number. That's right. All right. Very cool. What about uh, sometimes this line goes underneath? What does that mean again? Equal. Okay. So less, than less than or equal. equal to. And it's got to be exactly equal to, not close. Right. Exactly. All right. My favorite. Yeah. We got some number or numbers. We got some words here we gotta remember. And hopefully we can give you some memory devices to do that. So it tells us that A, B, and C represent all real numbers. So the first property that they have says that if you add A and B, it is a real number. So if you think about that, if you add two real numbers together. Like the, three and four. The answer is going to be a real number. Seven is also a real number. All right, so this is the closure property of addition that's being displayed because there's addition in between. What do you think multiplication is going to be? A times B is a real number. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. easy. Next one, commutative. I don't really know that word, but I know the word like commute. My dad used to commute to work. He all the travels. Time. He goes. Goes back and forth. Yep. So here is the commutative property of addition. That shows the numbers are in different order. Uh huh. So it's one is you're traveled. going to work, the other is going backwards. But it means the equal sign in between says it doesn't matter. Commutative property of addition. How about multiplication? Again. Same deal. Yep, yeah, switch the order around. How about associative? What do you think of when do you associate with me? Sometimes, <laughs> unless you make me really angry. So and then, so yeah, so A and B, that's Johnson and Kendro. We should have made it J and K. Associate together, and uh, Mr. Gilchrist is C. Uh, but then, all of a sudden, Mr. Gilchrist is nice to Miss Johnson, so then they're associating together and leaving Miss Kendrell out. <laughs> so associative is the letters are in the same order, but the parentheses move. Yeah, so just think about what's grouped together. Right. Uh, it's going to be the same thing for multiplication. So first one was associative property of addition, next one was multiplication. All right, these are the ones that I seem to have trouble with. Identities. Yeah, identities. When I think about identities, I think what is not going to change my identity? I'm still going to be the same person I've always been. So if you've got the letter A and it equals A, zero, you added it but didn't change its identity. So adding zero is the additive identity. Correct. Because it doesn't change its value. Right. But that's not true for multiplication. If we multiply by zero, that definitely changes yeah, the number. Yeah, it changes it to zero. So, so instead, if you multiply by one, so one is the multiplicative identity. That's a cool word. Multiplicative. Yeah, that's cool. All right, okay. inverse. Inverse, think, undo. Yep. So if you add a three and a negative three, cancels out, gets you zero. Or if you tie your shoe and untie your shoe, you're back to tripping <laughs> over your shoes. <laughs> and you're a big zero then because you can't walk. So that's a great analogy. Thanks. Um, inverse for multiplication is a little bit different. This is multiplying by the reciprocal. So three times one third will be one. One. So it has to come out to be one instead of zero. Uh, and make sure you know that number can't be zero because that does change things. Right. Okay, the last one, it's distributive, but it's not of addition or subtraction. It's actually of both. Or, I'm sorry, addition or multiplication. It's of both. So you're taking that A and distributing it in to both of those. So you get rid of the parentheses. So some people mess this up with associative. But look at associative up here. We got um, the parentheses stay there. Where in distributive, the parentheses go away. Okay. 
And this is a multiple. It's multiplication in between the right. the a and the b plus c. Okay, so how you guys are going to do this? We just introduced all the properties. What will happen is you are given an example, and you have to say which properties are being used. So here, at first glance, I'm tempted by distributive because I see parentheses, and then there's addition inside the parentheses. But the parentheses are still there, so it can't be distributed. Yeah, and if you think about it, what really happened, the 2 is still there, it just switched order. All right, so, so back switching and order forth, was. Commutative. Okay. That doesn't look like a C. Pretend it's a C. Commutative property. Now, you've got to decide is it multiplying or is it addition? Well, I see a plus sign. Yeah, but that's not being switched around. The it's math two. operator that's really being All right, rearranged. So that's there we go. Comprop right. malt. <laughs> Comprop malt. Definitely you want to abbreviate on these. Okay, I still see parentheses. Makes me think of either distributive or associative. And because the parentheses stay there, it's going to be associative because we just, the, the numbers stayed in the same order, but the parentheses moved. Yeah, here X and Y are grouped together. Here it's fine, fine. And all I right. see all addition, so it's going to be. All right, looks like X kept its identity, so this is going to be an identity of addition. Identity, uh, do we say property or identity? Yeah, property I think we do. of addition. Okay. Doing good. Here X kept its identity again, but it's the identity property of multiplication. Can write it that way too. All right. We're not picky. No, not very picky. As long as you have the keywords in there. All right. Here I have opposites, and that's inverse. The inverse. Is this uh? This is inverse. So this, okay. Can even write a plus sign. Make it shorter. Oh boy, what's happening here? Phew. I see parentheses and then I see no parentheses. And if I look, here was one five and look where it went. It distributed to both parts. It just wasn't worked out, but it's still distributed. Okay, now the technical name for distributive is distributive property of multiplication over addition. Oh, well, we're not going to get that crazy. Can I just call it this? Absolutely. Okay. All right, kiddos. Lots of new vocabulary, but nothing too crazy. So don't forget, math is love. See ya! Ta-ta!